everybody, how's it going? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew. I am 24 years old, originally from Jacksonville, Florida, and about 11 months ago, I graduated college and since then have been living out of my Jeep as a freelance photographer and videographer. So I had this idea to live on the road about three years ago. I was still in school, I was working, and I had just taken my first solo trip to Utah. I immediately fell in love with the West and realized I needed to find a way to spend extended periods of time on the road. My initial thought was a van, but I quickly came to three main problems. A, I'd most likely have to sacrifice four wheel drive. B, I would definitely have to sell my Jeep. And C, I'd have to put a crazy amount of money into the van to make it what I needed. So I ended up sticking with the Jeep and it was definitely the right decision. When I was a kid, my uncle had an old two-door JK, doors ripped off, huge mud tires, and I really fell in love with Jeeps then. Fast forward now, I've had this Jeep for six years. It started with a couple thousand miles in a soft top, and then about a year ago, I gutted the inside, retired the soft top, and put about 250 hours into the Jeep interior and exterior to make it what it is now, which has been my home for the last 10 months. Right off the bat, I had difficulty finding videos online that gave an idea about how to convert your Jeep into more than just a overlanding vehicle for one or two week trips. I wanted to make this video right before I left for the trip, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized I wanted to wait and get a chance to actually experience what it's like to live in the Jeep. And it's been about 10 months now, three seasons and 25,000 miles. So I can confidently say that I have a pretty good understanding of what it's like to live out of this thing. And I'm excited to show you guys. So I'm currently out in Big Sur right now at this spot called Puret Ridge and it's been pretty foggy and cloudy all morning but the sun just came out, the clouds parted and it is looking pretty spectacular for this video so let's jump right into it. Also everything I mentioned in the video and everything I'm going to walk you through in the car is going to be linked below in the description so you guys can check that out if you want a little more in-depth review as well as some price points on everything. First we'll start with the base and model of the car. It's a 2013 four-door Jeep Wrangler Sport Unlimited. And pretty much everything base-wise on the car is still stock. Uh, I did change out tires. These are 35-inch all-terrain tires. And I did switch out the battery as well. I'll show you guys that. So this is an Odyssey 34 PC 1500T deep cycle battery. And if you don't know what a deep cycle battery is, it is just a super reliable battery that can pretty much discharge all the way down to zero and your lights will actually shut off. And then you can still get in the car and it turns on. So it's just kind of reassuring to have the deep cycle battery on the road. So moving up, you have these two front runner spotlights here. These are by a company called Z-Roads. Um, one thing I might have changed is instead of mounting them here, I would have put them up a little higher or possibly in the front. They do refract some light off the hood right here. Um, but other than that, they're extremely good. One of the first issues I realized when I chose the Jeep and discarded the van was that I was gonna have to figure out a way to sleep in here. And I'm 6'3", and just didn't see how it'd be possible for me to be crammed in, in the stock roof. So I ended up going with Smitty Built and their Safari Hardtop, and I think it's the most valuable piece that I bought that has made living out of the Jeep sustainable and comfortable. And if you notice these little windows here, these little skylights, it actually gives an extra six inches of room on the inside of the Jeep. My only complaint with the roof is that these windows right here, you have to seal them yourself. The way they come sealed is just not very well done. And I did get a couple leaks throughout the first two or three weeks of the trip, but just go to Home Depot, buy some black seal, and it's really easy to fix up, and I haven't had problems since. One of my favorite features about this roof is that there actually comes with pre-drilled holes in the roof for a roof rack. Smitty Built does make a rack that goes specifically with this roof and with those holes, but it's pretty small and considering everything I've got up on the Jeep right now, it just wasn't practical for me. So I ended up going with the Rhino Rack Maximus 3. This thing has a static load of 600 pounds and it's held up really, really well. Again, the only downside is I had to drill holes here and modify the steel plates to get it into the roof, but wasn't too difficult. And now the rack fits pretty perfectly on the extended part of the roof. Starting on the back of the rack, I've got a ABS pipe pressurized shower. REI has a great video on how to make this. There's a little air compressor that hooks into the 12 volt, runs up to this little bike pump, 
hooks in, pressurizes, and just water on and off. This switches to the nozzle. For mounting this thing, I just use L brackets from Home Depot. And underneath this are these little solar panel mounts, and I've linked those below in the description as well. Everything on my roof was kind of mounted with those. They aren't specifically made for Rhino Rack. They aren't specifically made for anything on this roof rack. If you are gonna end up with the Rhino Rack, I ended up buying like 15 of these little mounts and they worked really, really great. Before we do the awning in the tent, I'm gonna run through the front of the rack first and then I'll get both of those opened up. So up top here you have the 70 watt marine northern wind and sun solar panel. The big benefit of this solar panel is how well it fits on the rack. It's about an inch thick, 12 inches wide and then five feet across. I've seen a ton of people do the flexible ones where they mount on the roof. One, I really didn't have any space for it. And two, I didn't want to permanently put anything on the roof. So this solar panel is just attached with brackets from Home Depot again. And those solar panel mounts I was talking about earlier, there is one hole drilled from the top of this into the roof. And that is hooked up to a Goal Zero Yeti 400, which I will show you later. And with that, let's move on to the rooftop tent and the awning. So there is the tent and the awning. Each usually takes five to 10 minutes to put up. The awning is a little tricky um, to do on your own. Really quick and easy setup and put down. Um, I'll go into detail a little bit on the awning and then we'll hop inside the tent and I'll show you that. So the awning itself is about eight feet long and then six and a half feet wide. Cause I did start the trip as fall was beginning and then I was straight into winter. But as spring comes around and I'm sure during summer I'll be using this a lot more. Now onto the tent. So this is a Tough Stuff Overland three-person tent, just to show you kind of the outside view here. These are little windows that pop up and down. If it's raining out, you close these. Never gotten wet inside the tent. They also have a rain cover here, which I have folded up a bit, but this will fold down completely and cover the car. And if it's raining or snowing, I'll throw it up. So this is the inside of the tent. As you can see, it's actually fairly tall. I think the bed itself width-wise is probably in between a queen and a king. And lengthwise, I'd say it's around seven or eight feet. Really comfortable, fits two very easily. Three is kind of a stretch, but also rigged up some string lights in here. And boom. Stays relatively warm. I do have a space heater I throw up in here during the winter. Um, I think the coldest night I spent up here was maybe 10 degrees, 9 degrees, something like that. And as long as you have, I got a Sub-Zero sleeping bag, a comforter, and then I have a space heater in the car that I'll show you in a bit. Only big downside of the tent that I found, and I'm assuming it's like this with all rooftop tents, is that if it's windy up here, let's say 12 to 13 miles per hour of wind, or if it's raining out, it is extremely, extremely loud and kind of uncomfortable to be up here. But all in all, really impressed with it. Tough Stuff did a really great job. Really excited to get back up here and spend less nights in the car. And then lastly, really quick on the exterior and then we'll move inside, is the spare tire mounts right here. So we have a Rotopax four gallon gas container, an ax and a shovel, and everything is connected with a Rotopax adapter. This goes right into the actual spare tire and hooks in from behind. These loop through here to lock and everything is locked in. This lock right here, the bike lock runs through that as well as the gas container twice around the shovel right here. So you can't really get anything off of that, which is nice. Woo. So that pretty much wraps out the outside of the Jeep. You saw the tent, the awning, the solar panel, wind fairing, shower, roof, roof rack, and spare tire mount. So that's pretty much it for that. Let's move inside. And just like that, the clouds have shifted, the wind has changed, but that's all right. We're gonna move inside the car now. And I'm gonna start with the back of the car and work my way forwards. So right off the bat, you can see all of the wood. This is all just plywood and it's been cut, sanded, stained, and finally sealed. For the most part, I just used half inch plywood, but there are a couple three quarter inch pieces for extra stability. And underneath right here, you can see two by fours here, a two by four here, and then this three quarter inch piece runs four feet that way. And those are bolted directly to the Jeep. So the build on the inside is broken into two main pieces. One is gonna be this back area, 
where the trunk was and then the second is going to be where the back seats were. And we'll go ahead and start first with the fridge. Um, on top of the fridge is just some clothes storage, underwear, socks, long johns, all that. Then the fridge itself is a Dometic 28 quart fridge and it just opens right here. You can see it's pretty deep. Some yogurt, some sandwich meat, some fruit. So the fridge is actually just hooked up to the 12 volt in the car and the cord runs up to the front center console. A 28 is absolutely perfect if you're by yourself and even with someone else. My goal is to be able to live out of the car for eight to nine days at a time without having to stop for food. I think the longest I've ever made it is about 10 days, but I literally ate everything left in my car. And this thing is very, very useful for that, holds a ton of food, and I really don't think I'd be able to do this sustainably without the fridge. And then beside the fridge, there is about a foot of storage right here. So now that everything's cleared out, I can show you this. And this is a bike lock that runs around the metal roll bar, and this is connected to the back of the fridge, just so no one can get away with this guy, even if they break into my car. So along with the three gallons of water I had over there, I also have a five gallon water plug. And it's pretty much the same concept as the shower, but it just uses a bike pump instead, and you get pressurized water. These are just a couple adapters from Home Depot that are glued in right here. I cut a hole in the cap of this and then just ran a hose, just like this one on the inside. I've had people ask why not just flip the jug upside down and you don't need the pressurized water, but I didn't want to risk leaking five gallons of water in my car. And behind this, there's some storage. I have a slack line, a fire extinguisher, and a hose. The hose is used to fill up the shower. Also store back there, this guy. This is a NOCO Genius Boost, and what this does is you just hook these cables up to the end right here, it's down, and then you can actually jump start your car. And I've seen people online do it 14 times, it'll jump one car. So definitely one thing I would 100% recommend if you're doing van life, Jeep life, whatever, if you're living on the road, I think that is a must have. So now we'll move on to the main drawer, outside bottle opener, just black handles on everything. And then this is just a little slide to keep this drawer in place. So first you've got three small drawers on top, coffee grounds, wrench, French press, cooking oil, griddle, pan. Here's just some utility stuff, a light, sunscreen, bug spray, that kind of stuff. But these actually pop out. And then this is the main food cabinet. So you can see these small drawers right here just run on little quarter inch pieces of plywood. So you can slide back and forth. As you can see all these drawers are lined with this little material just from Home Depot, just to help give it grip and not tear up the wood. This drawer isn't on slides or anything. It just uses this negative weight pressed up against here to hold it in place. Finally here we have the kitchen drawer. So this is secured by a bungee right here. So here's the kitchen setup. The first right here, just the cutting board, is just held in by negative pressure against this. The second is the grill itself, and that is connected with drawer slides to the inside of the third drawer, which is the cutting board. And this is just a piece of wood here, and then I sawed this cutting board to fit it accordingly. It's nice because it has a little handle up top as well. And then this slide is connected to the inside of the Jeep right there. And then finally underneath, you have this little pole that just helps hold up the kitchen if you're on a slope or anything. And then all my silverware right here. What's really nice about this is that everything folds into itself. So all the soap, the propane, silverware, the grill, it all folds in and you don't have to store it anywhere but right in there. And lastly in the back we have the mattress. This is actually just a queen size mattress topper cut in two and it's 28 inches across, about three inches thick and just has a sheet underneath it and this blanket. Two pillows right here, side storage, a little nano puff blanket, some blinds. So these are actually curtains that'll hang on the inside of the car when I sleep. And they're just little pieces of Velcro that Velcro directly to the side right here. So with that, the bed now extends 74 inches and I can pretty comfortably sleep in here. With the bed undone, you can start to see how much more space you have with this Smitty built roof. So these are the windows. There's one two, three, and then a fourth one over there is kind of covered. So I have a crossbar about 10 inches 
and then another six inches to the roof itself. You can see here, it just gives it a lot more room inside of the Jeep itself. That is pretty much the bed setup. In the beginning of the trip, I was sleeping most every night in the tent. And as winter came and it got a lot colder, I spent more nights inside of the car. I also think to make living out of the Jeep really sustainable, you have to have a way to sleep inside of the car. Sleeping in the tent is great, but it's tough to rely on if it's raining out, snowing out, really windy. So sleeping in the car, I'll have a Sub-Zero sleeping bag or my 20 degree bag, wake up, turn the car on, let it heat up for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and it just makes it a lot easier to get out. But moving on from that, we'll go to the driver's side door. This is the closet. So I ended up building a little closet on top. It has some grip, some shoes are up there right now. And this is just connected again with this two by four that runs directly into the Jeep. Then behind the car as well are these. Pop these into the window, roll the window up, and they stay in place right there just to give some extra ventilation at night. I know you can buy those little window vents online, but they were like 150 bucks. And one thing I learned when outfitting the Jeep is that a lot of the things online that you see, you can build yourself and save quite a bit of money. It's gonna take a little more time, but I think it's worth it in the long run to do a lot of the things yourself rather than have someone build out your car for you or have someone put everything on the car for you. And just a much more worthwhile experience to do it yourself. And yeah. On to the passenger side, rear door. Here, behind the window, you've got this Mr. Buddy heater. So I'd say this right here is the single most valuable piece in my car. This is basically just a propane heater and sleeping up in the rooftop tent in any cold conditions, this thing is a must. Moving on from the heater, we'll go behind the passenger seat and you've got a dry bag just with all my dirty clothes in it so it doesn't smell up the car. A sleeping bag tucked away under here. Some bear spray, protein. These are all just tools for the car. A tent. I have a couple of hammocks back there. Finally, right here, we've got the Goal Zero Yeti 400. And this is the plug into the solar panel. And that runs directly from the Goal Zero up through this side paneling. And it goes through a small hole in the center of the roof. and attaches through the roof through that center up into the solar panel control box. Really, really impressed with the Goal Zero setup. I haven't had any issues really running out of power. Since it's attached all the time outside of the car, I don't have to set the panels up. The Goal Zero stays charged pretty much all the time. Right now it's been on and off cloudy, so it's at around 60%. But on a sunny day, that solar panel will charge this in probably five to six hours, which if you're driving or if you're just hanging out, goes by really, really quickly. And as you can see here, the Goal Zero is actually locked in through the metal of the car. And one runs the lengthwise that back through this drawer. And then these two link up together. So you can't pull out this drawer and you can't take away the goal zero. Here we've got the camera drawer. So again, this locks in with just a little padlock, folds out, this holds it into place. Everything slides. All my charging cords here, the goal zero, laptop. And then this was really, really helpful. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but this is the Fajal Raven Kaken. Uh, photo insert and basically this just has really good organization set most of all my gear is in this drawer and again this connects to that lower lock down there and secures everything as well as a second padlock here this is a safety net so pretty much wraps up that and finally, the front seat here. These floor mats are great. They're just mud floor mats, really helpful for the road. Keep my backpack up front, little film camera. Also a must, I think, are these little hydro flasks. I very rarely like to pay for water. I just think it's a waste. So I use this hydro flask a lot. The gallon jugs I have in my car have been using since the beginning of the trip. And I usually try to have four or five gallons of water in those jugs. And then I have the big jug in the back, which is five gallons. And when the shower is working, that's an extra four. So I tend to try to keep 10 to 15 gallons of water as I can. All right, so that pretty much sums up the tour of the Jeep. Some things I think were extremely essential to the last 10 months would be the Tough Stuff tent, the space heater for sure, the solar setup. I think it's really important if you want to live sustainably on the road to have a solar setup, the Dometic fridge. And lastly, I think most importantly is the Smitty Built Safari hardtop. Again, I'm 6'3", and living out of this thing with a regular hardtop I think would have been nearly impossible. So this Smitty built Safari hardtop with that extra six to seven inches, I think made the world of difference. Again, everything is linked below that I've shown you in my car. 
and definitely feel free to comment with any questions about the Jeep or more in-depth explanations about how I outfitted it. I've also linked my website and Instagram below if you guys want to check out where 25,000 miles living out of this Jeep over the last 10 months has taken me. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys found this helpful.